Conscious desire. When a man is born into a new world of a subtler form of life, that interlaced cord of etheric matter, which had united him to his physical body, is broken. The silver cord is loosed, and the man severs his connection with the dense physical body and passes out through the highest center of the body instead of the lowest to life in a higher world and of another dimension. So it will be found in all the bodies and sheets of the microcosm, for the analogy will persist on all planes during manifestation. When more scientific knowledge has been gained it will be found that the same procedure on a larger scale takes place in planetary manifestation. A planet is but the body of a planetary logos, that body being etheric, and the logos expressing himself through it. And building upon the etheric scaffold in the vehicle of manifestation. The moon once was the body of expression for one of the logoids, the earth now is, and the cycles change continuously. The center of escape for the etheric body is found likewise in a physical planet, and the planetary silver cord is used at the time. Appointed, that the times and cycles, their commencement and termination are hid in the mysteries of initiation, and do not concern us. Again in the solar system itself similar action will eventuate at the close of the Mahamanvantara. The Logos will withdraw within himself, abstracting his three major principles. Point three seven his body of manifestation the sun. 37 principles, the basic differentiations, essential qualities are types of energy upon which all things are built. They give the distinctive nature of all forms. And the seven sacred planets, all existing in etheric matter, will withdraw from objectivity and become obscured. From the usual physical standpoint, the light of the system will go out. This will be succeeded by a gradual inbreathing until he shall have gathered all unto himself. The etheric will cease to exist, and the world will be now. More. Full consciousness will be achieved, and in the moment of achievement existence or entified manifestation will cease. All will be reabsorbed within the Absolute. Kalala, 38 of the cosmic heaven of rest will then ensue, and the voice of the silence will be heard now. More. The reverberations of the word will die away, and the silence of the high places will reign supreme. 2. The Nature of Prana In dealing with the subject of the etheric body and its functions as an assimilator and distributor of prana, we have dealt with it from the standpoint of its place in the scheme of things. We have considered this matter of etherics from the angle of correspondences, and have traced analogies in the system, the planet, and man. We have seen that it formed the foundation of the dense physical form, and in itself constituted a most important link between A, B, C, physical man, and the emotional or astral plane planetary man, and essential emotional quality. The Logos, the Grand Heavenly Man, and the Cosmic Astral Plane. We might now narrow the subject down to the consideration of the etheric body of the human being and not touch upon correspondences with things systemic or cosmic at all, though it may be necessary to remind ourselves that for the wise student the line along which wisdom. 
38 Pelaya, a period of obscuration or repose planetary, systemic or cosmic, an interval between two periods of manifestation. 88 ATREATISCONCOSMICFIRE comes as the interpretive one. He who knows himself, in objective manifestation, essential quality, and comprehensive development, knows likewise the Lord of his ray, and the logos of his system. It is only then a matter of application, conscious expansion, and intelligent interpretation, coupled to a wise abstention from dogmatic assertion, and a recognition that the correspondence lies in quality and method more than in detailed adherence to a specified action at any given time in evolution. All that it is possible to give here is material which, if rightly pondered on, may result in more intelligent practical living in the occult sense of the term living, which, if studied scientifically, religiously and philosophically, may lead to the furthering of the aims of the evolutionary process in the immediately coming lesser cycle. Our aim, therefore, is to make the secondary body of man more real, and to show some of its functions and how it can eventually be brought consciously into the range of mental comprehension. Science, as we know, is fast reaching the point where it will be forced to admit the fact of the etheric body, because the difficulties of refusing to acknowledge it, will be far more insuperable than an admission of its existence. Scientists admit already the fact of etheric matter, the success of photographic endeavor has demonstrated the reality of that which has hitherto been considered unreal, because from the standpoint of the physical intangible. Phenomena are occurring all the time which remain in the domain of the supernatural unless accounted for through the medium of etheric matter, and in their anxiety to prove the spiritualists wrong, scientists have aided the cause of the true and higher spiritism by falling back on reality and on the fact of the etheric body, even though they consider it a body of T-H-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-B-O-D-Y-A-N-D-P-R-A-N-A-89 Emanative radiation being concerned with the effect and not having yet ascertained the cause. Medical men are beginning to study blindly as yet the question of vitality, the effect of solar rays upon the physical organism, and the underlying laws of inherent and radiatory heat. They are beginning to ascribe to the spleen functions. Hitherto not recognized, to study the effect of the action of the glands, and their relation to the assimilation of the vital essences by the bodily frame. They are on the right road, and before long perhaps within this century, the fact of the etheric body and its basic function will be established past all controversy, and the whole aim of preventive and curative medicine will shift to a higher level. All we can do here is to give simply, and in a condensed form, a few facts which may hasten the day of recognition, and further the interest of the true investigator. Let me, therefore, briefly state what will be dealt with in our remaining three points. The functions of the etheric body, its relation to the physical during life, the ills or diseases of the etheric body taking care to retain the original meaning of the word, disease. Quote, closing parenthesis. It's after death condition. This will embody all that is as yet of practical use. More may later be forthcoming for our helping if that which is now given to the public is carefully followed up, and if investigators wisely, sanely and broadly study this important matter. 
As the nature and functions of the etheric body of man assume their rightful place in the thought of the world and as it is realized that the etheric is the most important of the two physical bodies, man will be brought into closer conscious contact with the other evolutions. 90-A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-O-N-C-O-S-M-I-C-F-I-R-E That evolve in etheric matter just as he does in a dense physical body. There are certain large groups of devas, called the devas of the shadows, or the violet devas, who are closely allied with the evolutionary development of man's etheric body and who transmit to him solar and planetary radiation. The etheric body of man receives prana in different ways and of different kinds, and all these ways bring him into touch with varying entities. 1. Solar prana. This is that vital and magnetic field which radiates from the sun, and which is transmitted to man's etheric body through the agency of certain diva entities of a very high order, and of a golden hue. It is passed through their bodies and emitted as powerful radiations, which are applied direct through certain plexi in the uppermost part of the etheric body, the head and shoulders, and passed down to the etheric correspondence of the physical organ, the spleen, and from thence forcibly transmitted into the spleen itself. evolved than man himself. Unprotected man lies at their mercy, and in this lack of protection, and man's failure to understand the laws of magnetic resistance, or of solar repulsion comes, for instance, the menace of sunstroke. When the etheric body and its assimilated processes are comprehended scientifically, man will then be immune from dangers due to solar radiation. He will protect himself by the application of the laws of T-H-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-D-O-V-Y-A-N-D-P-R-A-N-A-91. Earning magnetic repulsion and attraction, and not so much by clothing and shelter. It is largely a question of polarization. One hint might here be given. When men understand the Diva evolution somewhat more correctly and recognize their work along certain lines in connection with the sun and realize that they represent a Magnetism all terms expressing the same idea. 
demand therefore repeats on a lesser scale the work of the great solar devas, and in his turn adds his photo repolarized or remagnetized emanation to the sum total of the planetary aura. 2. Planetary Prana This is the vital fluid emanated from any planet, which constitutes its basic coloring or quality, and is produced by a repetition within the planet of the same process. 39S Me, I, 232-238 the whole cosmos is guided, controlled and animated by an almost endless series of hierarchies of sentient beings, each having a mission to perform. S. V. I. 295. Among these the hierarchy of human monads has a place. 92 ATRE ATISCOFCOSMICFIRE undergone in connection with man and solar prana. The planet the Earth, or any other planet absorbs solar prana, assimilates what is required, and radiates off that which is not essential to its well-being in the form of planetary radiation. Planetary prana, therefore, is solar prana which has passed throughout the planet, body, has been transmitted to the dense physical planet, and has been cast off thence in the form of a radiation of the same essential character as solar prana, plus the individual and distinctive quality of the particular planet concerned. This again repeats the process undergone in the human body. The physical radiations of men differ according to the quality of their physical bodies. So it is with a planet. Planetary emanated prana, as in the case of solar prana, is caught up and transmitted via a particular group of devas, called the devas of the shadows, or ethereal devas of a slightly violet hue. Their bodies are composed of the matter of one or other of the four ethers, and they focalize and concentrate the emanations of the planet and of all forms upon the planet. They have a specially close connection with human beings owing to the fact of the essential resemblance of their bodily substance to man's of their substance, and because they transmit to him the magnetism of Mother Earth, as it is called. Therefore we see that there are two groups of devas working in connection with man. A. B. Solar devas, who transmit the vital fluid which circulates in the etheric body. Planetary devas of a violet color, who are allied to man, as etheric body, and who transmit Earth's prana, or the prana of whichever planet man may be functioning upon during a physical incarnation. A very pertinent question might here be asked, and though we may not fully explain the mystery, a few. Sud. T-H-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-V-O-V-Y-A-N-E-T-R-A-N-A-93 Just a hint may be possible. We might ask, what causes the apparent deadness of the moon? Is there neva life upon it? Does solar prana have no effect there? What constitutes the difference between the apparently dead? moon, and a live planet, such as the Earth. 40. Here we touch upon a hidden mystery, of which the solution lies revealed for those who seek, in the fact that human beings and certain groups of devas are no longer found upon the moon. Man has not ceased to exist upon the moon because it is dead and cannot therefore support his life, but the moon is dead because man and these diva groups have been removed from off its surface and from its sphere of influence. Point for L man and the devas act on every planet as intermediaries or as transmitting agencies. 
Where they are not found, then certain great activities become impossible, and disintegration sets in. The reason for this removal lies in the cosmic law of cause and effect, or cosmic karma, and in the composite, yet individual, history of that one of the heavenly men whose body, the moon or any other dead planet at any time happened to be. 3. Svakana of Forms It must first be pointed out that forms are necessarily of two kinds, each having a different place in the scheme. Forms that are the result of the work of the third and the second logos, and their united life. Such forms are the units in the vegetable, animal and mineral kingdoms. Forms that are the result of the united action of the three logoi, and comprise the strictly diva and human forms. There is also the still simpler form embodied in the substance of which all the other forms are made. This mat, 40s, D, I, 170 to 180, 41s, D, I, 179. state, and merge with a puzzling confusion with groups of entities that are almost on the involutionary arc point 42-43-43a. 42 involutionary arc is the term applied to the first part of the evolutionary process. It covers the path of descent, or the coming down of spirit into ever denser matter until the lowest point is reached the point of densest concretion. The latter half of the process is called evolutionary and marks the ascent or return of spirit to its emanating source, plus the gains of the evolutionary process. 43 inches the three zero root pourings. In the diagram the symbols of the three aspects of the logos are placed outside of time and space, and only the streams of influence from them descend into our system of planes. They represent in due order what are commonly called the three persons of the Trinity. It will be seen that from each of them an outpouring of life or force is projected into the planes below. The first of these in order is the straight line which descends from the third aspect, the second is that part of the large oval which lies on our left hand the stream which descends from the second aspect until it has touched the lowest point in matter, and then rises again up the side on our right hand until it reaches the lower mental level. It will be noted that in both of these outpourings the divine light becomes darker and more veiled as it descends into matter, until at the lowest point we might almost fail to recognize it as divine life at all, but as it rises again when it has passed its nadir it shows itself somewhat more clearly. 
down. The third outpouring which descends from the highest aspect of the Logos differs from the others in that it is in no way clouded by the matter through which it passes, but retains its virgin purity and splendor untarnished. It will be noted that this outpouring descends only to the level of the Buddhic plane, the fourth plane, and that the link between the two is formed by a triangle in a circle, representing the individual soul of man, the reincarnating ego. Here the triangle is contributed by the third outpouring and the circle by the second, the Christian creed, by C. W. Leadbeater. PP 39 40 43 ACS PI 98 99 100 103 1 The root of life was in every drop of the ocean of immortality every atom and matter was impregnated with the life of the logos 96 A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-O-N-C-O-S-M-I-C-F-I-R-E -E. In dealing with the second group, the human form transmits the emanative radiations to a much higher grade of diva. These devas are of a more pronounced hue, and after new assimilation of the human radiation, they transmitted principally to the animal kingdom, thus demonstrating the close relationship between the two kingdoms. If the above explanation of the intricate interrelation between the sun and the planets, between the planets and the evolving forms upon them, between the forms themselves to be electric duality our love between two solar the fire of mind the relation between fire by friction this is the subjective expression will or power love and wisdom activity or intelligence this is the objective expression will or power love and wisdom Activity or intelligence. This is the subjective expression. Fire. Heat. Motion. This is the objective expression. Will or power. Electric fire. Love wisdom. Solar fire. Active intelligence. T-H-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-D-O-D-Y-A-N-D-P-R-A-N-A-97. Viva evolution which acts as the transmitting transmuting this throughout the system. Lastly, all work with fire. Fire internal, inherent and latent, fire rain. 
be eliminated. Fire generated, assimilated and radiated. Fire vivifying, stimulating, and destroying. Fire transmitted, reflected, and absorbed. Fire, the basis of all life. Fire, the essence of all existence. Fire, the means of development and the impulse behind all evolutionary process. The preserver and the constructor, fire, the originator, the process and the goal, fire, the purifier and the consumer. The God of